personal finance practice problem using Excel. Graphing bond price part number one. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, so there's a little bit more action going on down below. We got part one, part two, and part three. But here we're focusing in on part one, which has three tabs. Example, practice, blank. Example, answer key. Let's look at it now. Information on the left, calculations on the right. We're gonna be looking at the relationship between the year or as time passes and the bond price. We're gonna be wanting to graph that out. Now with a normal bond, that gets a bit confusing because we have two things going on from a cash flow perspective. One, an annuity payment, the interest payments that we're, seeing, we're receiving on a periodic basis, and two, the face amount that we're receiving at the end. So to break this out, first, we're gonna look at, in essence, basically a bond, which is like a zero coupon bond, uh, uh, so that we can look at just the end payment that we're going to be receiving, graphing that out. And then in part two, in a future presentation, we'll basically look at an annuity, which is kind of like similar to a bond that just had basically the payments and not the principal at the end. So we can graph that stream of payments out, which is a little bit more complicated. And then we can put those two together and think about a bond, which has those two streams in place, graphing it out, looking at the relationship between as time passes, as we get closer to maturity and the price of the bond. Okay, so let's first go back on over to the example tab, and then we're gonna go to the practice tab. This has some pre-formatted cells, so you can work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is blanks, so except for the data on the left. If you don't even have that, you could just open an Excel worksheet. You could select the whole worksheet. I would lay down the baseline formatting first by right-clicking on it, format the cells. I would go then to currency, bracketed numbers, drop down, no dollar sign, no decimals. I'm not gonna hit okay because I already have this. I'm gonna X out of it, then add your data, change the cells as necessary. For example, percentage cells here, put a skinny C down and then we're ready to go. So we've got a bond. We're gonna say the face amount is 1000. It's a 30 year bond, annual payments. The rate is zero, basically a zero coupon bond. This is basically, and uh, we might not always have zero coupon bonds that are that long, like a 30 year, but our our idea here is to do this so we can compare it to like a long bond and we can have a graph uh, comparing as time passes and what would be the impact on the bond price. So then we got the discount rate, in essence, the market rate. So typically, if we have a bond then that doesn't have any interest that it's going to be paying out, then it's gonna to have to sell the bond at a, at a discount because that's what's gonna incentivize people to buy the bond so that they get the face amount at the end or maturity of the bond and no interest payments. So that means we're gonna put less money up front and we're gonna get the full amount at the end maturity. Okay, so let's go ahead and first calculate the bond price. So I'm gonna go up in D here and say, this is the bond price. And let's just do it for year one this time. So if I was just to purchase the bond, I'm gonna make this a little larger. Let's make this black and white by going to the home tab, font group, bucket drop down, black and white. And we'll do our normal calculations for the bond. We, we would normally have the present value of interest, interest, interest payments but we don't have any so it's zero because we're not going to get any because we're not going to get any interest payments all we have then is the second part of the bond price present value of the face amount which we're going to discount back using the 9.5 percent way out 30 years out into the future so it's going to be pretty low so we're going to say this is negative present value shift nine the rate is going to be that 9.5 it's not semi-annual but annual so we don't need to do anything funny there comma number of periods we're just going to pick up the 30 comma comma because it's not an annuity so we want the uh, future value which is the thousand dollars we're going to get in the future and enter that's the 66 dollars so it's probably got some decimals does it have some decimals there there we got so we got the bond price is then for year one is the sum of these two adding it up so we'd have to put 65 70 down or so in order to get the 1,030 years out into the future because it's way out there in the future and we're not getting any interest payments. So let's go ahead and, and make that bordered 
and blue. So I'll hit the drop down. If you don't have that blue, it's in the color wheel. Standard, there's the blue that I'm gonna use, the standard blue. So now let's do that same thing, but now let's imagine we go from 30, 30 years out and we bring it all the way down to, to, uh, to each year closer to 30 years, 30 years. So I'm gonna then, let's make another skinny C column or make a skinny F that's like the skinny C, it's the skinniest C. So home tab, font painter, format painter, skinny F, which is now skinny. And we're gonna say, let's say years, let's say year and price. We want year and price calculation. The price is gonna be easy to calculate because we just need to do this one here, the present value as the years pass, as time goes by, as we get closer to maturity. Why aren't you close to maturity yet? I don't, maybe I'm just different because whatever, font group, time passes and you're not getting any closer to maturity, whatever. I, so any case, we're gonna say then this is gonna be zero, one, two. We'll take those three, we'll copy it down to 30, putting our cursor on the fill handle, bring that on down to 30 and then let's center that and let's just do our calculation right here again we just need to do this one the second one here so we can just say this is going to be the present value shift nine the rates that 9.5 comma number of periods is going to be 30 comma oh uh, wait a sec number of periods let's do the number of periods this way i want to get to that 30 but i'm going to do it this way i'm going to go all the way down and say we want to take 30 minus the zero, 30 minus zero, because because that, that'll allow us to copy it over, copy it down. So in other words, this first one is outside of the data, it's over here. I wanna make that absolute because I don't want it to move down when I copy it down. So I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the B and the seven, you only need a mixed reference, but an absolute one works. This one, I want the 30 to remain the same, subtracting zero, and I want the zero to move down. So it would be 30, 29, and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna say, this will be F4 on this one, making it absolute minus the zero. And then comma, comma to get to the future value. And the future value is this 1000, that 1000 is outside of our data set. Again, when I copy it down, I don't want it to move down. Therefore, absolute reference dollar sign before the B and the two, you could do that with an F4 selecting F4, enter. So there we have it. We should get to the same number if I add some decimals. So we got the same number there. Let's just say without year one, we'll say, take that off. So we got period at the per first point of purchase, 6570. So then I can copy this down. I could just double click on the fill handle button, see if it does it what we, would, we think it should. So I'm gonna open this up a bit. So let's double click on the next one and check it out. So now we've got the negative present value. We've got the rate, uh, which is that, that 9.5, it looks right. Then we've got the number of periods, which is now 30 minus the one, which is 29 periods, right? And then we've got the, the future value, which is the 1000. So that looks good. So now as we get closer to maturity, because really, uh, at, like if I was two years out, then I'm closer to getting that $1,000 at the end. So you would expect the price to go up, right? Because as I get closer to maturity, I'm willing to pay more for the, for the investment because I'm closer to getting that lump sum payment, the full amount at the end, the 1,000 at the end. So you can see if you look at that kind of component of a bond, then we're willing to pay more and more. And by the time we get to uh, period 30, We've got the full thousand dollars that we're willing to pay because now it's at you know real time by the end. Okay, so let's graph that out then. Let's graph that out and see what it looks like on a graph. Is it is it a straight line kind of relationship? In other words, we could say, look at the difference here. The difference, let's make that black and white. Let's make that black and white. And I'll make that a little larger. And I could say, let's take a look at the change, which is gonna be the 71. 94 minus the 6570. Let's make that a little wider. 
or a little add some decimals and copy that down so here's the change that is happening so you can see it's not exactly you know a straight line relationship we have here so we might want to graph it out let's graph it out let's check that out so i'm going to select these two data sets here i'm going to select these two and we're going to go we're going to go up top and go to the insert and i like to choose the charts so that i can actually graph out the x and y axes and i usually choose this one that has little dots and the line so let's pick that one and so if i pull that over let's say pull it over here somewhere so now we can we could check it out and so i'm just going to delete the title so that we have a little bit more room and then i like to look at the data just to see with the data see if i got the right data set so here's the data set if i edit it i could say is that picking up what we want we've got the x-axis are the years that makes sense the years at the bottom the y-axis is the price the so price related to the years that looks good i'm going to close that out and say okay here so that looks pretty good i might want to add the axis titles now so i usually hit the plus button there we're going to say plus button and let's add the axis titles so now there's the axis now you can click on this axis right here and it, you can't really tell right now but it'll allow you to enter a formula by saying equals and so you can see up top you've got the equals now and i want this to be the price so now it's got this formula if i hit enter it'll populate there so it's a little tricky to see it that it's working that way until you actually hit the enter but this is the same thing i'm going to say enter or equals there's the equal sign and this is the years and enter so there we have that and then you can play with basically like this end this end point right here maybe i don't want it to go up past 30 because i'm going to stop at 30 so if i click on this this item we get the data on the right we want the three bars i'm going to stop this at 30 and say tab and so now you can you can see it widen out a little bit so that looks pretty good and then you can also adjust you know how many uh periods you want like so it's got f every five here you could say the major let's say we put it up to like every two years or something like that and you can adjust you know the table thusly but uh well let's let's keep it at that two we'll keep it at the two and you can see closing this out making this a little bit wider that looks pretty good and you can see that as we get as we get towards the the maturity then the price you know the price is going up but again the relationship isn't basically a straight line as we're getting closer to the maturity and that's assuming that we got the same basically discount rate that we're using that we're using the whole time and we're just adjusting of course the the uh time frame the level until we hit maturity so if we're if we're you know at 10 10 years here then if we're 10 years in we're closer to that maturity date which is why we would expect to pay more because we expect it to mature in less time than the 30 years that we had basically up top Okay, so that's that relationship. Now, also, uh, when we look at the other kind of, of thing, which we'll take a look at next time, which will be the annuity payments, like the interest payment portion of the bonds, you would expect the chart to look something like this, right? Because as time passes, you're going to get less interest payments if you're talking about a series of payments. And then you got to kind of combine those together to, to see what the relationship is with regards to the bond uh, itself that has kind of both of those components combined within it so you got to keep both those things kind of together when you're trying to think about what is the impact over time with the bonds because you got those two kind of cash flows that are taking place okay so we'll do those in, in future presentations let's go ahead and put some brackets around this and make it blue and bordered i'm going to make this bordered and blue so that looks good and then of course you could adjust say the discount over here and you could say well what if, what if it was like four or something like that and you could see you know the impact on our curve here what if it was you know zero then we'd have the straight line if it was then uh eight you know you could see 
the impact on the curve. So we're gonna bring it back up to the, what do we have it at 9.5, I think it was, 9.5. So there it is, let's do a quick spell check. We're gonna to go to the review up top, spelling and check out the spelling, looks good, okay.